Well, aloha Friday. Actually, this is just a facade because I'm actually in Northern California right now and the Pineapple Express is coming through from the islands. Imagine that. Um, you know, I, I've talked a lot about me and, and things that I've done and some of my journeys, but today I want to focus on education and what education, my experience, what it did for me, uh, I want to uh, share it with you. And, and I would really, really hope that, uh, again, you would find a way to show this if it's not happening now, but school's in. Well, maybe not. Some of them are on spring break. But that you would give your kids an opportunity to see this so that they get an idea that you know, it's okay. It doesn't matter where you come from. Good morning, Mary. It doesn't matter where you come from. It matters where you go and what you've learned, the lessons you've learned along the way. And mine have been many. So that being said, I want to clear some things up. Me Inc. Now, Me Express and I Need Change Now was just a thought in a garage four years ago. You know, I was doing a lot of diddling with, with things and, and, and I wanted to become a speaker. I wanted to be a, a spokesperson for our youth of today because I've been coaching over 40 years, uh, uh, many different sports. I've been involved in sports my entire life. Uh, sports kind of sort of kept me out of trouble, and we'll talk on that in a little bit. But I, I want to be a spokesperson. And now I have an opportunity to expand uh, because of a certain individual. And I'm going to take a minute and say, Sensei, I know you're listening. You watch me all the time. I'm so happy, and, 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 and God is good that f he found a way to help you with your medical issue that you had last night. I was worried. I couldn't sleep all night. I actually got up and, and, and posted on, uh, on uh, uh, L LMH uh, Rockstars, uh, a prayer chain. Uh, that being said, I'm on my way to hopefully becoming a professional speaker. So, me Inc. now was was me being in a garage, my man cave, and, and I just wanted to, to have, I had a vision, but I had to have a name on that vision, so I came up with Me Inc. now. Uh, I want to let you know that I'm the founder, and all I did was find the name Me Inc. now. I'm also the CEO, okay? Now, for most people, CEO is, is, uh, is a uh, chief executive officer and, and, and somebody making a lot of money. Man, I'm so broke, I can't even pay attention, okay? But it's okay because my CEO stands for me educating, or, or excuse me, courage educating others. I have the courage to educate others, and that's what I'm trying to do. If, if, if some money comes my way, great. If it doesn't, then I'm keeping again. You're going to hear this probably every time I speak. I'm keeping my promise to God that I made it three years old, uh, that I would make it right. So every day that he allows me to wake up, I'm going to do my best to make it right. Uh, you know, uh, some people have degrees in, uh, in college, junior college. I went to junior college for a little bit. Some people have degrees. Uh, in college, uh, matter of fact, they have a, a few, masters, this, that. Me? I came up with, actually, my father came up with it, and it's pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> I have a BS major in conology. <laughs> Check that one out. A BS, and I actually found out in doing some, some research that there is such a thing as a BS degree in a junior college. Well, so I have a BS major in conology. People say, well, what is conology? Well, conology is... You know, when you go to colleges and you go to the graduation ceremonies, you'll see physiology, sociology, thisology. Well, what about conology? Conology is the game of life. Conology is learning how to play the game of life. There's bad con and there's good con. I had my bad con when I was younger. That had polished me into the diamond that I am that says, you know what? Today, I have good conology. And my conology wants to help others. I want to educate others. Okay? So let's get on to why I'm here today. I'm here today to discuss um, education and what it means to me. What it did for me. 
and and, and uh, you know, I went to uh, you, you know the story. It, it, by the time that I went to high school, I got adopted and and went to high school. Uh, I was in my twenty eighth school. Okay, which means I had a lot of struggles, uh, averaging three schools a year. Do the math. Three schools a year for 27 years until I got adopted and and uh, I I made it to uh, high school and stayed in the same high school didn't change uh, I'm actually illiterate and and I, and it, and sometimes when I'm doing my speaking on stage and I take a dry ease board and I'm writing the kids will laugh at me and and I'll stop and pause for a minute and I'll say why are you laughing and they'll say oh because you didn't spell that right. And I said, well, okay, so let me ask you a question. If you went to nine, if you went to 18 elementary schools and nine junior high schools, do you really think that you got the best education? Okay, like, like right now, here's my illiterate. I-L-L-I-T-U-R-I-T-E. To me, that's illiterate. But it's not the proper spelling. So when I would put that up on the dry ease board, they would crack up. Okay? So my high school year. My high school years were so important to me. I grew up in a really hard time. All this stuff that's going on today with uh, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, all lives matter, one blood, one love. That's, that's how it is, okay? But I grew up in time in the, in the 60s and the 70s where I, uh, I actually hang out in Watts. Uh, I lived through the Watts riots. Uh, I lived through the Rodney King beatings. I lived through uh, my sophomore year at Long Beach Poly. A group of individuals came into our school with pipes and, and two-by-fours and bats and went crazy. I lived that. Okay? And, and so, however, it didn't stop us from doing what we did, and that was do the best we could to get our education at that time. I went to Long Beach Poly, class of 74. And, and uh, a little later on in my story, I'm going to tell you an amazing thing that happened to me that has stuck for me the, all my life. So I went to high school. Again, Long Beach Poly. And uh, sports kept me in school, as it does today's kids. Kids, if you're listening, find something. Find an activity in high school. Because you have to have a certain grade. If you really like that activity, you have to have a certain grade to keep you in that activity, which keeps you away from uh, things, you know. Uh, For me, my high school year, my senior year, 18 years old, my first three periods um, across the street at elementary school, Roosevelt. And, and first period, second period, and third period, I was in a kindergarten class as a teacher's aide helping, uh, actually back in those days, you know, they, they kind of sort of pushed kids to the side. And, and I was the one that they pushed them over to. And, and it was pretty cool because... Um, it gave me an idea, and my idea was because of where I came from, the path that I had, the beatings, the alcohol, uh, seeing my mother beat, domestic violence, all that that I had in me, if I could give those kids three hours, first period, second period, third period, if I could give those kids three hours of my time and my love, it, it made me feel good. It made me feel like I was reaching out and helping them in, at least in that time to forget about what they might be going through once they get home. And you know what? It felt good. And that was kind of sort of my direction. Uh, one, my foster home that was very, 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 very well taken care of in my foster home. And so that was my platform. And that was a start of me going to where I'm at today. So uh, while I was doing that, I had people that were watching over me. Look, I, the, the, the sports that I, I, I did in high school was football, track, water polo, wrestling, and swimming. I also was in the marching band my sophomore year. Uh, I almost got to march in the uh, Rose Parade. I was a second alternative or alternate. Um, but I only did that one year. It was pretty cool. Uh, band people, they're, you know, the college kids and stuff, those people are nuts. They have their own little thing about them. And it was pretty cool. Friday nights after games, we did stuff. (laughs) I can't say what we did, but we did stuff. Uh, but anyhow, so sports and me being around the coaches that I was around, uh, kind of sort of helped me. Um, the, um, 
the teachers, the counselors, again, I'm going to say this many times. I'm so thankful for the counselors that I had. Carl Cohen, uh, all my, my teachers that I had, Coach Velves, Coach Mead, uh, even, even later on, Coach Morales, Coach Ziggenhagen. These are all people that have done something in my life in the sports part of it that keep me going. Okay? So, I'm going to tell you about my graduation. And we're going to go on of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay? So, graduation... My foster mom asked me if I had invited my my mother and my stepdad, and I said, no, and uh, I'm not going to. And she said, oh, you are. Coming from the Japanese culture that, that she came from, she said, you're going to. And I said, mom, he's embarrassed me. I, I have a life. I, I love what I'm going on right now. I'm, I'm proud of where I'm at. And, and I don't want to invite him because he's embarrassed me my entire life. She said, you're going to invite him. Well, guess what? I invited. So I went over to the house and I invited him. The first thing Cal did is he had a fresh bottle of Kessler's and he gave it to me. A pint. We called them soldiers back then. I actually been started drinking when I was nine years old because he turned me on to alcohol at nine. Um, so anyhow, I got this little buzz going. We went to the, to, uh, uh, the terrace uh, down in Long Beach, downtown Long Beach, right next to the Long Beach Arena. And while we're waiting, we have a class of 800. While we're waiting in the terrace to march down into on the floor of the Long Beach Arena. Okay. Um, somebody's passing around a bottle and it's got some white stuff. Okay. I'm talking alcohol, like moonshine. <laughs> well, you know, might as well look. It happens. I told you a while back, I don't hide nothing from nobody. I tell you just the way it is. Because when I talk stories, I talk it from my heart. Okay. It is what it is. It happens every single day. I worked at a, I worked at a school. I just recently retired. We busted people for drugs, alcohol, uh, edibles, all that stuff. Okay, it happens. So why not say it the way it is? So they can't come back and say, "Yeah, you're full of doo doo. It didn't happen. You didn't do this. You didn't that. You were like a goody two shoes." <laughs> not me. Okay, I had some stuff going on in my life. So anyhow, so we are now walking into the floor of the Long Beach Arena. Okay, so if we have an 800 class graduate, class of 74, how many people do you think are in that arena? Just two mom and dad. Okay, well, you should add grandma and grandpa because you know they're there too. Add brothers and sisters. There has to be a few thousand people in the Long Beach Arena, and I'm on the floor of the Long Beach Arena. So we go in. We march in, and there are three, uh, two aisles, one in, on this side, one on that side. So you have this group over here, you have the middle group, and then you have the far left group. And you have two aisles going down. You have the stage up in front. Uh, and and so, the ja so the jazz band starts playing once everybody sits down, okay, uh, after the song that gets you into marching up to da 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 The jazz band starts playing. And what happens? Somebody jumps up in the crowd and they go, get it on, man, get it on. Cal, my stepdad, I kind of sort of struck down in my seat and was like, I didn't want to invite him. I didn't want him to come. It's okay. This is my time. This is my moment. 18 elementary schools, nine junior high. I'm graduating high school. I made it. I got a cap and gown, okay? <clears throat> so now Jack Dubois, which happened to be a, 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 a principal at one of my nine middle schools, Washington Middle School, and uh, he knew of me. So Polly has a motto, and it is home of scholars and champions, okay? So Jack Dubois, actually we called him Du Bois back then, is walking around with the microphone because that in those days you had the microphone with the cord and he's walking and he's got this long cord and he's and he's got a, a, a thing of index cards like this and he's calling up individuals that are going to go on to college with scholarships academically and uh, uh, athletics. 
So <clears throat> I figured this is going to be a long one. All right. So all of a sudden, my marching partner, Lori Lauer, Lori, I'm, hey, man, <laughs> I know you're there. Maybe we can go to work together sometime uh, with what you do. Anyhow, uh, <clears throat> my marching partner hits me and she said, he just called your name. <laughs> B.S. There ain't no freaking way that this guy called my name from where I come from. Well, the reality of it is he did. And how did I know? Because Cal jumped up and let everybody in the entire arena know, that's my GD son. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I get up, I stand up, and I got to kind of sort of balance myself a little bit, right? <laughs> Kessler's, White Lightning, whatever. And I start walking up towards where he's at. And as I'm walking up, he says, you know, Charles Prinzen, uh, lettered in five sports, football, track, water, da da da, da and so on and so on. And as, as I'm walking up and I finally get up to him and he shakes my hand and I look at him and he says, uh, do you know why you're up here? Well, hell no, I don't know why I'm up here. Really? I, I, of course, I didn't say that, but that's what's going through my brain. I'm, like, still shocked that I got called up in front of thousands of people on the floor of the Long Beach Arena. God allowing me moments in my life that I will never, ever, ever forget that gives me courage educating others. Okay? So... He says to me, he says, do you know why you're up there? And I said, no, sir, I, 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 I don't. And he says, well, what did you do uh, across the street at, at Roosevelt Elementary? And I said, well, I was, uh, I was a teacher's aide for three periods a day in a kindergarten class. He said, yeah, he says, I, I heard that. And, and, and you got a lot of praise from the teachers and the principal and the, and the staff over there because you really showed a lot of compassion to those kids. And you know what? Some of those kids that they had given you that they didn't have the time for because they had the ones that were going to move on to the first grade. Some of those kids that you took under your wing, they went on to the first grade. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And I hope that those kids today, they're much older now, are doing exactly what I'm doing, which is paying it forward and making sure we never forget where we come from and that we give back because that's what it's all about. So he says, uh, I understand that you got a scholarship. <laughs> yeah, I did. I said, yes, sir, I got a scholarship from the Los Angeles Times. It was only worth 250 bucks, but back in those days, that was a little bit of money, and it was cool. And he says, so what do you want to do? What, what, are you gonna, what do we plan on doing? What do you want to do in college? I said, well, I'm going to go to Long Beach City College. They have a really good early childhood education program. And, and, and uh I want to I want to open up uh, a preschool. I actually want to become a preschool teacher. Well, when I said that, everybody started laughing at me. I mean, the whole arena starts cracking up. I'm like, all right, whatever. So we went on. I got my diploma. Uh, went outside and this lady was crying and, and she was like really, really having a hard time. I said, ma'am, in my cap and gown, I said, ma'am, what, what, uh, what's going on? She said, well, I locked my keys in my car and, and, and my daughter and her friends are waiting on the corner up there on, on Pine and Ocean. They're waiting for me to come pick them up and I can't get to them. I said, ma'am, no worry. I'll take care of it in my cap and gown. I went over to her car and I got myself a, a coat hanger because I had my hanging my stuff, hanging on my cap and gown, hanging on my uh, a coat hanger. And like, she said, how did you do that? I said, don't worry. No worry, ma'am. Go pick up your daughter and enjoy your evening. Okay. So that, that kind of sort of gives you an idea of where I came from. All right. But I believe in cycles. I believe in cycles and I believe in completing circles. You don't go a quarter of the way. You don't go halfway. You don't go three quarters of the way. Life allows you sometime when you least expect it. Because life is a trip. It is. And when you least expect it, and God has given you this opportunity, when you least expect it, something jumps up and hits you upside your head and you go, what? One of those moments. 
one of those moments, and I've talked about it before, things that make you say, hmm, what? No way. For real? Yeah, for real. So about 20 years later, I was working on the docks. Actually, I started working on the docks just after high school. And uh, about 20 years later, I went on a golf course in Long Beach, and I was a single. And I got uh, I got put on with a, with a foursome. So you go out there and you know you shake people's hands and and this and this and this and and you get and I looked at this guy and and kind of look I don't forget faces I forget names and and sometimes while I'm talking stories if I get stuck I'm gonna remind you that I have old timers I don't have all timers I have old timers okay which means I have a tendency to get stuck sometimes but it's okay because I'll live through it uh, along with all the other things that I have in my life uh, PTSD whatever. And so anyhow, so, you know, you, you meet, you shake hands and you go, you go through the first hole, you go through the second hole and you start having conversation with these people. And about the third hole, I, I had to say something. 20 years later, I looked at this gentleman. I said, sir, I, I got to tell you something. Actually, I got to ask you something. Is your name Jack Du Bois? And he kind of sort of smiled at me and he says, well, kind of, sort of. He says, it's, it's a pronounced Dubois. Okay. And he, and I said, well, uh, Mr. Dubois, I don't know that you're going to remember me because there's a whole lot of people, a whole lot of kids in your 35, 40 years in the education field that you have touched. But I got to tell you, I want to thank you. And, and I'm going to, you know, it happens. When, when, when your heart starts, I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how, how, what kind of thug or where you, what's your back. I don't care what you did. When your heart flutters, you're going to get emotional. And I looked at this man and I said, sir. And I shook his hand. I said, my name is Charles Gary Prinzen Jr. And on the floor of the Long Beach Arena, June 14th, 1974, you called me up, a ghetto child, 18 elementaries, nine junior high schools. But you were my also my principal at Washington Middle School, and you knew of me. And so the message that you sent that day to me, when you were giving out uh, kudos to or acknowledging athletes going on to college, and you were acknowledging... Uh, scholarships to scholars in education that were going to college. You found a minute to call me up in front of all those people. And I'll never, ever, ever forget where I come from. That leads me to today. Today, I just recently retired from seven years at a high school in Northern California. I have been involved with uh, high school kids since I started coaching high school football uh, in 2003. So I was at Long Beach Wilson from 2003 until 2009. I moved up to Northern California and reunited with the love of my life, my very first. And uh, I started going to the high schools here. And so from 2010 until I just retired, which is what, 2017, I've been involved in middle school and high school up here. Okay, And at the high school, this is where I want the kids to really, really get this. Okay, At the high school, uh, as a campus supervisor, security, and, and I coach some sports, I, I've been able to talk to kids. Hey, Chris, uh, Crystal Best, I see you watching, girl. I'm so proud of you. You were one of the ones that I got to touch. And, and, and you were an amazing, beautiful young lady. You used to be one of those, those people that had that walls that we've talked about, that, 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 that rock, that force field around you. And, and you have come out, and, and I'm so proud of you. And you're such a very beautiful person. Uh, Omar, thank you for watching. You know, I have to keep watching this screen because I want to I give thanks to people that are watching me. I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this for the promise that I made to my Lord at three years old uh, when I was in a foster home on a swing set looking up and said, just let me get old. I survived a couple uh, uh, close calls with 
almost being killed, drowning in strangulation by my stepdad. And I'm here. I'm here because I'm still sending this message. So I got a chance to go and be a mentor at the high school. And, I, and I'll mention it. We'll see what high school in Vacaville, California. I worked there for seven years, almost eight years. And I was so blessed that, that the counselors and the teachers and all of them would, would allow. Hey, Lewis Kearns, my man. You know, yeah, yeah, I like your music, man. And, and, and I'm so nice to hear or see you looking because uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you've been in the educational field for a long time. Actually, I think you retired. But, you know, <clears throat> being here gave me the opportunity to walk around and talk to kids on a daily basis as being a campus supervisor, campus walker, campus assistant, whatever. And and I used to, I would just tell stories. And they have a IHS or a IHD, which is in-house suspension or in-house detention. And sometimes when they would get filled up, sometimes when they had a lot of kids in there that were on detention, they would say, hey, Chuck, can you, uh, can you go in there and talk? You know, can you, can you stay in there for a little bit because the kids are like a little out of hand? No worry. That gave me an opportunity to talk stories, not just as a coach, but now to the kids inside that classroom. And I'm going to be up front with you. When there was nobody around, we talked. And we talked slang. I said things that we're not supposed to say, but nobody else was around. And I talked their talk. I understand that they need to be respected. The number one thing that those kids don't think they get enough of today is respect. So what I did was, you know, I kind of sort of gave them respect first and I told them, I'm giving you respect first. And now I demand it in return. You know what? Then I tell my stories and they listen. And so one day I was in, in there and I was talking stories and there was a teacher in there. And I'm not going to mention names. But while I'm talking stories, and there was a large group of kids in there that day. Bad kids, bad, 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 bad. And so I was, I was getting serious. And when I got serious, I would just say the way it is. I didn't care. And so when, when it was time for her to, because uh, they come in like a period and another teacher had another period, another, you know, they gave up one, one hour of their time that they got paid for and they watched over the class. And so we, we walked outside to take a break and she looked at me and she says, you know, uh, you shouldn't be saying some of the stuff that you're saying. Hey, Daniel Crombie, dude, you know I love you, man. You know I love you. And I'm thankful for everything that you gave me while I was at Wilsonwood High School. Um, you gave me opportunities to do what I'm doing right now, which is talk stories. So anyhow, this, this, this teacher looked at me and, and said, you know, you can't talk like that to the kids. And I said, why? And she says, well, because, you know, you're in school and this. And I said, I understand. Ma'am, no disrespect. You got your education through colleges. You got your degree, okay? And you're able to teach. And you've been doing this for a long time. And I respect what you do. Really, really, really down-to-earth teacher, for real. I said, but I got to tell you, I have a BS major in conology. And that's how I talk to the kids. I talk to them from street Okay? Because that's what they understand right now. They understand street. They understand that and the way that they, the kids are today, they're out of control. I, I'm going to admit they're out of control. A lot of it might be from cycles from generations before them. Whatever, alcoholism, drugs, uh, uh, addictions, uh, domestic violence. Hey, granddaughter, love you. You know that. Firstborn granddaughter and firstborn great-granddaughter. Yeah, my great granddaughter Jariah, I love you. Uh, give the give the family love, please. But anyhow, so yeah, you know we have to be able to educate our kids. CEO, courage, educating others, my way, my way, because I know how to get to them. And so if if this journey that I'm on now, because I had an opportunity to coach at a high school on Oahu, I put application in. And, and after, after retiring, it was either going to go coach on the islands, varsity head football coach, or I was going to have this journey that I'm on right now. Well, guess what? The, uh, the coaching job didn't, didn't happen. Uh, 
I'll go back there and do some some clinics if I can. Uh, how, but God is leading me in the direction that I'm going right now, which is me educating the youth of today. Me ink now. Me expressing I need change now. And now, if you go backwards now. Because I think I got some, again, the more I speak, the more of these things, these hearts and people, are, it's pretty cool, man. It means people are watching me. I'm spreading the love. And, and, and if you spread the love to somebody else with, with the messages that I'm trying to give, then you're going to help me complete my journey and, and do what I promised I would do many, many years ago. But these kids have issues. Some of them come from parents that come from parents that had issues and they brought it on to the next group or the next group. And these kids are just living that, you know, we deal with kids every single day that have dysfunctionality that, that, that are, are adopted, that, that have problems at, at home where their parents are alcoholics or, or they're on meth and drugs or, or they've been abandoned or what the same thing that I went through cycles. It hasn't changed. It's not going to change. But what we have to do as elders, we have to teach our kids. We have to stay strong and say, oh, they need to get their asses kicked. You know, they just need, well, they need a little bit more discipline because they're not really getting it. But if they can't get it that way, then what we have to do is we have to humble ourselves as elders. And we have to show them that we can give them time and respect them for who they are. But in return... They really need to listen to us, okay? And so I'm giving it back. I'm paying it forward. And, and so maybe, just maybe, with his blessing, I can become a professional life coach, professional speaker. And if anybody's listening to this, uh, you can go on my website, just, just small cap, me, Inc. now. Or you can go to Chuck Prinzen at yahoo.com and get a hold of me. If you need for me to speak to somebody, if you need for me to get to these kids, I can get to these kids. Ask Lewis Kearns. He knows. Dude, I, I'm so thankful for you. You allowed me to continue coaching at that high school, and I did a lot of crazy stuff. I'm sure you got some phone calls, but you know what? <laughs> I love those kids. And today, I'm going to end with this. Today, I'm so proud that I touched the lives of some young men that are now playing D1 football from Will C. Wood. He just, got, he just got a scholarship to Nevada, Reno. He will be the starting quarterback there, no doubt in my mind. I have uh, another young man that was a punter. I have actually three kids that went to Nevada, Reno. Joel Batonio, now with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Alex Boy, hell of a punter. Hopefully he'll find a place to punt someday. He, he can punt. And then, and then this, this newest one, Carson. And so I have kids that have elevated to D1, and they have also playing pro football. Mike Willie, trying to be a councilman down there at Compton. So they all got an education, and they all listen to Coach Chuck, and they understand. Look, I can't keep it going. I just wanted, I really wanted to let this out today because of all the stuff that's going on in, in the schools. Yeah, we need to find a way to get down and, and mingle with our kids. Not just the education part of it. We need to get more serious on how we put our time into our kids today. Because they really need it. And, and a lot of them have those walls. A lot of them have that, that force field around them that they're not going to let you in. But we got to find a way to get in. Daniel Crumble, you're still watching. Dean of Education, dude, you're the man. You are the man. And you have an opportunity to help others do that in the position that you're in. Give them the opportunity like I had when I was at that school. I had workshops on, on Super Saturdays that they gave me. And, and, and I'm, again, I'm so thankful. I'm so blessed. Ending, I don't think I forgot anything. I want to thank everybody that gave, have given me time in my life to reach out and help somebody else. I want, I'm thankful for, for my, my Hawaiian family that allowed me a second chance because I wasn't that punk kid. I was that punk kid that had issues. Trust me. I got arrested at seven for robbery. 
because my cousins told me to steal a money box. And I got put in jail at seven years old for robbery. Okay? I have a past. I never spent the night in jail, ever. I was in jail many times. So I was one of those knuckleheads that we deal with today. I understand. But you know what all they need? What they need more than anything else is they need for them to believe in who you are. They believe in you and that you're straight and you talk to them and you don't bullshit them in any way, shape, or form and you give them what they so much desire is love because they might not be getting it at home. They might be getting that discipline at home. They might be getting beaten at home, but what they're not getting is they're not getting that love. So, in ending, thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity and you watching me. Thank you so much. Have a blessed Aloha Friday. I'm sitting here watching the rain come down. The Pineapple Express from the islands is coming our way and it's giving it to us right now. But it's all blessings. As we say on the islands, when it rains a little bit, blessings. It gets to wash away all the doo-doo, all the stuff that's going on in today's world. And we get to start again tomorrow. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. God is good every day. And thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity. As we say on the island... Ahuiho Kako.